And here we go again. Today I'd like to address a question I was asked some weeks ago, um, namely where did the term mouse come from and who, when, we, when did we get the first one? Um, so doing a little bit of research, searching Google for the various answers, I came across probably the very first mouse which is um, this one which is a wooden mouse and it was made by a guy called uh, by Douglas Engelbart and it was made in 1964 as you can see it's quite uh, it is quite a rough and ready um, bit of kit um, there's Douglas oops yeah there's Douglas um, sitting back this is him in later life I think he uh, died round about 2000 and I believe 2006 something like that but uh, that's the chap who invented the mouse and there is the first mouse as such it was um, it was just a block of wood as we've seen and it's got a couple of uh, metal wheels inside small bit of uh, circuit board connected to a tail or a, a lead going to a serial um, port um, <coughs> that's what it looked like on its back had a single button operation here which uh, allowed the user to uh, input and output etc um, and as you can see quite a sizable object if that's the size of a man's hand there but it was functional um, so we have a lot to be grateful for for Mr Engelbart um, we're fortunate enough to uh, have a little video um, which can explain his thoughts which we shall uh, have a quick look at in just a moment Come in, Menlo Park. Okay, there's Don Andrews' hand in Menlo Park. And in a second, we'll see the screen that he's working and the way the tracking spot moves in conjunction with movements of that mouse. I don't know why we call it a mouse. Sometimes I apologize. It started that way, and we never did change it. All right, as it moves up or down or sideways, so does the tracking spot. and the. The principles for its operation are quite easy to see. You'll turn it over, Don. Can you hear me, Don? Would you turn it over and we'll see, right? Its principle is that there are two wheels that roll on the surface. But since they're at right angles and kind of sharp edges, one will roll and the other slide in one direction. And as the mouse moves over the surface, then each of those wheels either slides sideways without rolling or rolls an amount that very closely duplicates the particular component of horizontal or vertical and the net motion it makes. All right, if you take a mouse and move it through some closed trajectory back to exactly the same point, usually the tracking spot won't come back to exactly the same place it was on the screen. And for that sense, it wouldn't work well if you're trying to trace maps or other figures and diagrams. But the way we use it continuously and exclusively is to watch the screen and to follow it around and we use this merely as a device to move that tracking spot and you're on the tracking spot you really don't care whether it follows exactly this or not in fact we've had it at times where our tracking device you had to move in an arc like that to make the spot the tracking spot go on a horizontal line and people adjusted to it and would go like that to go in a straight line and wouldn't even know that they were doing it other features of the mouse are that it stays put, I can lift it and replace it without having a spot change so I can adjust where I want it for my comfort. And these control buttons on the top are used quite a bit and I'll show you a little bit later how some of those are used. And so uh, that is uh, Douglas Engelbart with his uh, very first transmission of the and introduction in fact to the uh, mouse that we've seen. Okay, so let's take a look at other things which uh, from those days ha have moved us on. Um, just bring up another little window here which is this one here and this is the mouse we have in question. As you can see it's um, moved on a little bit in as much as we now have two two buttons on the mouse. Um, it's still connected on this one certainly with the same sort of serial connector which uh, we've uh, used in the past. It's quite uh, 
quite similar to the one that Dengelbart um, first created. Uh, we have one or two changes on the other side is in as much as uh, we have, and I don't know if you can re maybe get close enough to see that, we have several rollers inside there. Um, you can't detect them very well, they're uh, very black and just uh, barely visible. Um, maybe bring the mouse pointer to play in this. Uh, we have one roller here which we can see and another roller here. Well that does exactly the same job as uh, Engelbart's very first wheel mouse that he created and um, that's driven off a rubber ball it's got a, it's a metal ball with rubber coating um, and finally created into a perfect round uh, and that uh, obviously drives those two wheels that come in contact with it and that is commonly known as a wheel mouse um, usually I think at the time I bought this they were around about five pound a piece or something in that order okay so moving on just a little bit um, the next sort of invention was the next um, was the next kind of mouse, which is a, another. Again, it's a similar sort of thing. It's um, it's a wheel mouse. Uh, it's got th one button there. It's got another button there, and of course the center button, which we can uh, scroll and zoom on certain pictures and certain things. Um, on the underside, you'll see here that we have uh, we have an LED which can scan the surface that you're pushing it on which then reflects back the images that it sees and shows the, mo the forward motion of the mouse itself um, the connector as you can see is still on a serial port um, that's the way that works um, a little bit later on um, they did develop the next sort of connector which is that one which is a uh, a six pin uh, connector which is um, quite common in the key uh, in computers up until very recently actually I think probably around about uh, 2008 26 maybe something like that that was uh, made obsolete by the use of USB devices and here's one very very sim uh, it has still got the same optical um, window at the bottom there, same shape. We have the same three buttons, one, two, and a third button at the top with the scroll um, connection. Let me just see if we can plug this one in. Turn it around, always get that wrong. There we go, a little ding. And there we are, that's it in operation. As you can see, the light shines on the surface, and depending on which way you move there, it's actually... That means I've got two mouse, mice connected. This is the mouse I'm using, and you can see the action of the mouse on the window there. Um, that's actually working. So there we are. That was a slight increase or improvement on the original mouse. Um, there have been derivatives of that, which we can show in this one, which is uh, it's a Belkin mouse. And I don't know how well this will show up. But if we turn it, it's the same principle, it's got the uh, LED at the bottom which illuminates the ground and uh, we have the same buttons on the front here which have a left mouse button, right mouse button and a scroll window, all well and good, you say. But look at the back here, don't know if we can see that, um, don't know if we make it darker somehow, oh dear, what have I got to make things darker with? Um, a pinch your piece of paper there. No, we're not going to see that. It is actually flashing and changing colours um, like a rainbow gone berserk. And we can't actually see it. What a shame. Never mind. Um, maybe I'll use my body to mask it a bit. Ah, well, never mind. Some things failed. But this is... Um, for people who are attending this in person, this uh, demonstration in person, they'll have a look at this mouse because I'll take it with me for the demonstration. Um, as you, I don't know if you noticed that, it just changed to a very lovely shade of green on the front. Um, it's a blue now. Um, I'm trying to sort of shelter it as best I can. There we go, it's actually a blue colour. Um, it is actually driving, you can see the mouse pointer moving around. There we go, still blue. 
and depending on where you move it to and how you move it there we are change to green and red back to blue uh, so there's different colored LEDs uh, depending on the attitude of the mouse I think there oh, well that was uh, it was worth a try anyway uh, somewhere along the line um, we came across this is a, a PS2 mouse as you can see same six pins um, but we ended up with this device now this is uh, this is what they call a scroll, scroll track mouse now this is very clever in as much as you don't actually move the mouse itself you move the ball on the mouse I uh, haven't got a connector free to put the um, to put the well I have got one somewhere but I can't find it um, so there we are we have the same uh, PS2 connector with the six pins but we have a rollerball at the top so we can move that with our finger we have on the side here if I turn it round um, we have the uh, we have a button on the side there which you can see just pressing it now uh, which is brilliant now if we turn it around the other side we have a vertical scroll on there horizontal scroll now this dates back if you remember Engelbart's uh, a couple of wheels there one went uh, horizontal the other went vertical and these emulate the same thing one goes horizontal one goes vertical and of course the ball just takes you around the screen um, on this side of things we have another two buttons here now these are programmable uh, this is one of the days where you used to maybe go and buy a mouse from somewhere and you get this now this is called a handbook we forget about them don't we the handbook um, and within the little package of course we have a floppy disk with the instructions so this would feed in now the computer you need on this one just bear with me a second um, there are system requirements in here somewhere uh, you need Windows 95, Windows 98 or Windows Me or Windows 2000 um, so as you can see it's um, it's not that out of date with Windows 2000 means it's 17 years oldish um, but that's a uh, scroll that's uh, a scroll track mouse or a track mouse as people called them um, that's still functional um, we can uh, get one of these uh, which is a I don't know if we can see that yet yeah, just at the bottom there that is a uh, connector for the PS2 that converts nicely to USB now I don't particularly want to open this packet because uh, that's an item I have for sale for people and that's the last one I've got so if I open it up they're not going to get a product which is new but this is um, this is a working model they're not all these things I'm showing you today are working devices that's assuming we can connect them the next thing in line in this in, uh, innovation is uh, this little beauty the wireless optical mouse now we can't see it too clearly but it comes in two parts we have the mouse itself which has got the battery in it and of course this little gadget here which is the uh, the wireless uh, thing I can just show you one of those Oop, there we go just take it out and all it is basically is a USB device and a smallest little bit of circuitry inside there which you can probably only just about make out and that is a wireless receiver powered by USB um, the actual mouse itself very similar one it's not the same one but it's a very similar one um, has the battery slot underneath it has um, just turn it on there there we are and the LED underneath to show where it's going we have a little button on top we also have a scroll button and two side buttons very very similar to the scroll the track mouse or the scroll track mouse that we showed you just a moment ago so this is a multiplicity of uh, buttons on it uh, and fully programmable if you want so uh, very good wireless as well so we've done away with the wires makes it more comfortable to use this is the one I use with the uh, the plug it laptop that we do the demonstrations on so that's um, yeah fully working etc there we are that's that one somewhere along the line somebody got really ingenious and invented a, a different the new type of mouse and I pretty much bet there are a few people uh, certainly in the audience here who have seen this type of mouse 
Um, if you have seen it before, then I apologise. But for those who haven't seen it, it's uh, it's quite ingenious. And just give me a moment to do because it's a little bit stiff and wrapped up, etc. Um, plug that in the other way up as usual. There we go, and there's the little mouse, and it's called a finger mouse. That's it. Um, there we go. It's just. Uh, there's the mouse pointer there, you can see it on the screen. I hope I'm recording the mouse pointer at least. Um, maybe just a little bit. You've got to get the focal range absolutely spot on with this or else it doesn't work too well. Um, just, I, I look upon this as a toy more than anything else. We have a scroll button on the side which is uh, pressable. We also have a left mouse button and a right mouse button, all operated with the thumb. Uh, but it does work, and if um, if you have got a limited space, or you, you have some uh, vicious form of arthritis or whatever, and you're finding it's very difficult to, uh, let me just get rid of that screen which has popped up. There we go, and back we go to the mouse. There we go. This is a mouse We're zooming around here. Um, not quite. As, I, I think it's a, a knack. It's a it's one of those things that take a bit of getting used to, but eventually you get there. And there it is, that's the mouse, it's got the LED right in the front. And straps onto your finger quite nicely, so if you want to, I don't know, grab a pen or something, if you wanted to write a few notes or whatever, you could, away you go with that. Um, ingenious idea, Chinese, obviously. Um, and it, it, it actually works. Um, these are getting very expensive though, the more we get the... <laughs> I say that with very much tongue in cheek. This one cost, uh, I think it was about £2 or something like that, all the way from China. The postage costs more than the actual device. Um, so it's quite good. I uh, quite like playing and it's a bit of a, a talking point as well. If uh, somebody starts talking about mice then this is them. Um, Okay, that's great. So there we are. That's our little demonstration on mices or meeses or mouses. Um, the correct plural for mouse for a mouse is mice, I should say. And uh, it doesn't vary the fact that this has got its accidental name. And as you heard um, Engelbart say during his demonstration that uh, uh, he apologized for it being called a mouse. Um, started off that somebody in his in his um, program that it was developing the mouse um, noticed when they put the uh, wire out of the back that it looked like a mouse and everyone had a roar of laughter and from there after it was called the mouse uh, purely one of those things it wasn't designed it didn't have any uh, uh, mnemonic for the letters or anything like that it was just purely it was somebody commented that it looked like a mouse and that's the way it's been left I hope you've enjoyed this little mess around with um, with mice, mices and mouses. Um, I've certainly enjoyed it getting them all together. Um, surprising the stuff you keep in your cupboards and <laughs> you forget they're there. Uh, going back to that very first mouse that we started with, this, um, I, I found in the back of my cupboard I've got some 20 or 30 of these lying in the cupboard. So uh, more, fo more fool me for uh, buying so many at the time. But hey, who was to know what was coming round the corner? There we go. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, many thanks to the various contributors to this, um, to this demonstration. Um, this is uh, the very first picture of very kind permission of uh, SRI International. And it's also, I can't remember, but the name is up there for the people who, um, the people that gave the permission to show the video. Um, it is available on YouTube if you want. It's a two-hour demonstration, certainly that uh, Engelbart demonstration. So if you do a YouTube search for uh, mother of all demos, so if you look at um, put computer mouse hyphen the mother of all demonstrations, then um, you'll see that uh, Douglas Engelbart name will come up. His date of birth was actually the 30th of January 1925. 
and he died sadly on the 2nd of July 2013, not 2008 as I said during the video. But uh, that's Engelbart, Engelbart Tumperdink I was going to say there, where did I get that from? Ah oh dear, I'm losing it slowly. Yeah, that was uh, Douglas Engelbart in 1964. I think this has probably taken um, more recently than that. But uh, that's the gentleman we have to thank for the uh, the glorious mouse. Please remember, if you can, to uh, uh, follow my streams on YouTube. I'd much appreciate it if you would. Uh, follow Howard L. Hall on YouTube and of course if you want to see any of the pl product demonstrations or demonstrations that we uh, do in the Plugit group you need to look for www.plugit.org.uk that is Plugit, B-L-U-G-I-T dot O-R-G dot U-K Plugit.org.uk and you can find a multiplicity of videos and demonstrations on that site uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.